go. That's what I'm talking about right there. Check that out. Gorgeous looking. Absolutely gorgeous. Well, hello, and thanks for joining me for another one of my, uh, my holiday videos. I'm doing these for the uh, holiday season, uh, specifically for the week before Christmas. That's, uh, I'm putting them out as I go, folks. Uh, this one, I think, is number four. So if you would, if it's the first one you've seen, take a look at the others. Um, and what I'm doing here is just including you in the kitchen with me as I'm cooking. I'm preparing stuff for family and for the Christmas. And uh, so I'm trying to get ready before Christmas Eve. Uh, I've got a few things I'm going to be making, and today's is going to be pretty easy. I'm going to be doing some follow-up on yesterday, which is where I started tamales. And that's where I cooked the roast, and uh, I have now set the roast aside. It's in the fridge. I have the um, juices from that. I poured them off in a bowl, and they're in the fridge. And I've got a chili paste in there that's waiting for me to turn all of that into tamales. So I'll either be doing that today or tomorrow, most likely today. Um, and you know, cool thing about tamales, they keep. So you make them ahead of time, you put them in the fridge or the freezer and they're okay. All right, now what I'm doing today is a really cool recipe. It comes by two different names. I've grown up knowing this by either magic cookie bars or Hello Dolly cookies. Basically it's the same thing. And there's a whole lot of different stuff you can do when it comes to jazzing them up. But what I want to do is kind of show you the original recipe. What came out way back when I was a kid. I think this originally uh, premiered in the early 60s. Folks, a lot of recipes were done that way. Now before we get on with that though, let me mention um, my recipes. I provide those through my website, which is satrotter.com. The link for that is right down below this in the description box. If you want those recipes, check that out. They're really good quality recipes like you would find in a, uh, a cookbook that gives you pictures you know, and shows you step-by-step -step tutorial method. The same way I teach is the way I've written my recipes and they're really cool. They're only 25 cents. Go check it out. Um, it's worth it. Folks, this is cool. It's easy to make and uh, it's got simple ingredients. What more could you want? So I'll tell you what, come over here and let me show you what I've got, what I'm going to be putting together, and um, what I'm working with. This isn't hard to do. Come on. And before I get moving on to everything else, let's talk about the ingredients themselves. What I'm going to be needing here is a stick of butter. I need a cup of chips, chocolate chips. I have shredded coconut here, and this is uh, one and a third cup. A can of sweetened condensed milk. I need a cup of graham cracker crumbs. All I've got is whole graham cracker, so I'm going to have to make my own crumbs. And I need a cup of chopped nuts. I'm going to have to chop these. Not a big deal, all right? This is a very easy make, and it produces such a delicious cookie. But I would like to mention, you can jazz this up and change it up and fix it up and add stuff and change it so many ways. Think of all the different kinds of chips there are, or the fact that you could use M&Ms. Think about the different kinds of nuts there are, or the fact that you could, you know, use whole nuts or chopped nuts, your choice. Fix this up and change it up and make it yours. If you want to use chocolate graham crackers, then do it that way. It doesn't matter. Make it your recipe. Just so you know, it's very flexible. Now, something that I came across some months back and I wanted to share it with you. These little guys right here, this used to be a common item in the home when I was a boy. This was something that came out, I think in the fifties. And um, I you know, grew up in the sixties and I remember this all through my childhood. These are nut choppers, okay? They are designed specifically to take whole nuts and give you chopped nuts. They're really cool. They have this little screen in the bottom and a little uh, crank that has teeth on it that spin around. And so we would just take our nuts, put them right down into this. It's got a little lid. We sit and crank them. So when I was a kid in the 60s, you didn't always get chopped nuts. You just kind of had to do with what you could get. <laughs> and so uh, you would often get whole nuts. And there's a couple of different ways of getting this right here. 
All right, looky there. <laughs> now that, folks, that is just darn right, or uh, downright sharp. That is a cool idea on any day of the week. It's kind of sad that this little item isn't sold in stores anymore. If it is, I haven't ever seen it. And if it is, somebody let me know where to get it down in the comments. Uh, I think it's just really a cool item. And, uh, you know, something that has lasted this long. This is more than a half a century old, and it's still cranking out chopped nuts, just like if it was a brand new nut chopper. There we go. Now, I wanted to use that just because I thought it would be cool, but there's something else I need to show you. When it comes to getting nuts, if you don't have a nut chopper, use one of these. Use a plastic bag. Put your nuts inside of here and use a skillet and just bang them, okay? Those nuts will break up easy enough, all right? It's not a big deal. So I need one cup of graham cracker crumbs. I do not know if one package will get me one cup, but it looked like it would be roughly the right amount. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put them in there. And even though I've got arthritis and my hands hurt a bit, I'm going to just crush. <clears throat> Using the heel of my hand, pressing straight down. And I guess I could have used a pan and beat these down the same way I would have done nuts. But looky there, folks. So sometimes, if you don't have the right tools, make them. All right. So I needed a cup of graham cracker crumbs. I think I've got a cup of graham, graham cracker crumbs. Oh yeah. And then some. All right, got all my ingredients lined out, ready to go. Uh, I'm gonna make a suggestion here. You know, you're gonna have to have melted butter in this. I guess I could melt my butter and pour it in there. Um, or I can heat the pan in the oven. Now this is the old way we would do it. A long time ago before microwave ovens existed. We would take the pan and heat it in the oven just to the point that it would melt the butter. After the butter melted, we would then put in our graham crackers and form our crust. All right, now these things we got a microwave oven. Okay, much faster. I will help it out a little bit. that butter up just a little bit so these days you got a microwave oven if your pan will fit in the microwave well for goodness sakes enjoy that method pretty cool all right looky there I have melted butter <laughs> a little bit there being stubborn but it won't be for long Okay, so it's time just to get the graham cracker in here and press it out and get busy making this. Come over and let me give you a close up on this. It's not hard. You know, when I was younger, we would open a can like this using a church key. Now, a church key, really cool. One end of it would open bottles, you know, beer bottles, stuff like that. Nowadays, you just twist them off. But cans didn't have easy open tabs on them, so we would use this and punch a hole, a triangular shaped hole in the can. And we'd punch one hole in one side and then a small hole opposite of it to pull in air and it would, the, the sweetened condensed milk would flow out easily. It was really a cool thing. Now, this, I've got my butter down here. I've got these crumbs. All I'm doing as you're seeing here, we're just sprinkling the crumbs in. The next part of this is simple enough. You just want to layer in the rest of your ingredients. Now, as to how much 
uh, or I should say as to the, the um, layering sequence, that's strictly up to you. You know, you can put in um, the nuts first or the chips first or whichever, you know, um, but here's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to start with the chips. And I'm just looking for an even coating as much as I can get. And some little tips I'm going to give you right here and now. You've already gotten a couple, you know, using the microwave, that kind of stuff, real cool. But when it comes to your butter, don't use an unsalted butter here. Use a salted butter, specifically. The salted butter, the salt in it, offsets the, the sweetness in the graham cracker crumbs. And it really... It provides an extra dimension and when you taste it you'll see exactly what I'm talking about that it is exactly the right idea all right here we go so I'm gonna go in with the coconut now here's the next thing your coconut if you'll notice I'm using pre shredded coconut I didn't shred my own and that's on purpose that's because they sweeten pre shredded coconut that's right they add sugar to it they um, dust it with sugar and it is a little bit sweeter and it gives a little bit better dish when it comes to this dish okay so do yourself that favor just get the pre-shredded coconut and that's the oven telling me that it's time for these to go inside of it okay so now our nuts right over the top now this which I used to poke a small hole in one side and a big hole in the other I still want to get that kind of a slow drizzle effect out of this so I'm only going to open it so far I'm hoping I hope we'll see because what I'm doing is trying to get an even coat and if it comes out as an even ribbon at one speed it's a lot easier for me to get that effect if you know what I'm saying as far as I'm concerned, we're done with it. That tastes very good. I believe this is ready for the oven. Okay, I got a little bit of a mess on one edge. So I'm gonna take that off of there. And that away, it doesn't come out looking messy. And that way, if I wanted to serve it in the same pan, I can feel proud of what I've done. There we go. Let me get this up in here. Let that cook. Okie dokie. Break out my handy dandy little timer here. And that is for 25 minutes. Okay, there we go. We're cooking with gas. 25 minutes. Now, you know, a lot of these recipes that you see for holiday treats and things like that, a lot of these came from the 50s and 60s and it came from mass marketing, all right? And what would happen is you would have companies that would make a product, in some cases a really neat product. It just needed a use. So what they would do is put out good recipes to use that product. All right, and sometimes those companies would have other companies that they would work with that would sell more product. This is how green bean casserole came, became a thing. This is how the Toll House cookie became a thing. And this is how these magic cookie bars, also known as the Hello Dolly cookie, became a thing, all right? So it's just that simple. Um, enjoy these recipes, okay? They are all over the place, but remember, you can make them yours. You can use your ingredients, jazz it up your way, turn it into your special little item that nobody else happens to make. Because if you're the person that makes a magic cookie bar that uses, let's say, um, toasted coconut with um, almonds and butterscotch morsels with M&Ms, well, there you go. There's a cool one. Okay, so just be innovative. Try stuff and come up with your own. Um, I'm going to get on to some other things, and uh, uh, you're going to see the outcome of these cookies here in just a little bit. 
but there's something else I wanted to show you and it's a carryover from yesterday's uh, videos which was the tamales. I want to show you what we do with those drippings from the roast. We're going to separate those drippings from the lard and uh, it's really not a very hard thing to do. It's a very smart thing to do especially when you're going to be using both. All right. Oh yay. There we go. Just right. A little bit of browning on top. Oh, that looks good. Yeah, take a look. There we go. That's what I'm talking about right there. Check that out. Something I want to do on this before I move on. Uh, this is really nice and hot. You don't cut it while it's really hot like this. Cut it when it's cool. But I've learned on these edges, while it's hot, while the sugars are still molten, it is a really good idea to just go ahead, take a knife or a spatula, and break that sucker free from that edge. Do yourself that favor. Now, when that cools a little bit, I'll be able to cut this into bars. And you can make those any size you want. I usually do little squares, okay? And I'll get, I think, about 12 squares out of this or maybe a little more. So divide yours however you'd like. Okay, folks. Now, so this is what I was talking about, my tamale drippings right here. I poured all of the drippings from my uh, roast through a strainer directly into this bowl. Okay, now put it in the fridge. It has done its thing. Underneath this top layer, I have gelatin, but I need to get the top layer off and I'm gonna just make sure it is broken loose from the edge all the way around. And I wanna use these gloved hands to fish that out. That's because that's just the easiest way I have figured out to do this. There we are. And the whole idea here is I'm not looking for the gelatin. I'm looking for this part right here, the lard. That's the part I'm looking for in that bowl. And that is going to be used, actually both of these parts are going to be used in the making of the dough that goes on the outside of the tamales. How's that for like way cool, huh? If you never watched a tamale making video, believe me, it is quite the process. All right, so here I have the drippings from that roach, which are quite gelatinous. This is uh, almost like jello, but just slightly more liquid than that. And uh, it's filled with flavor, all right? It's got the flavor of those chilies that I used. Look at this, this is spiraling back and forth as I set it down because of its gelatinous qualities, I guess. Anyway, um, when we're making tamales, we reuse everything. And the, the gelatin is flavor for the, the masa harina, for the dough. It's also a way of rehydrating the meat after it is shredded. Now, like a lot of doughs that use fat, this dough uses fat also. It uses lard, specifically. Now, you can buy lard for this, but if you're already cooking your roast and you got the lard right there, why not just go through the process of harvesting it? Hence separating the products, refrigerating it. A lot of people just go right at making the tamales, but frankly, if you do your roast today in advance, you're just doing yourself a big O favor. Well, whew, still a little bit warm. This is coming down in temperature. Pretty soon I'm gonna be cutting this and enjoying it. Um, if you want, I certainly hope that you enjoy that recipe that was baked at 350 degrees for 25 minutes. You saw how it went together. There was no real tough job there. So make it and enjoy it. It's good stuff. Enjoy your holiday season. Thank you for sharing part of it with me. And folks, well, Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays and all that stuff. Oh, please, check out my recipes at my website, satrotter.com.